With Sabres GM, Jason Bottrell. And uh, Jason, first of all, how are you and your family doing? We're doing all right. Obviously, it's a difficult time for everybody, and we certainly uh, miss some of the things of uh, just being involved with the Buffalo community here right now. But everyone from my standpoint and my family is doing very well, and uh, I know interact with our players. Um, everyone's wondering how things are, are going back here in Buffalo, and certainly very excited to, you know, in the near future, get back to uh, Key Bank Center and, and perform for everybody. Uh, just a couple of follow-ups to your uh, earlier presser, and then we can dive into maybe some things organizationally that uh, haven't been touched on recently. Um, when you talked about the need for more scoring, um, I think that had been talked about a lot before, but I'm, I'm wondering how you balance the, the need for more scoring with perhaps better overall defending as well, based on the fact that both of those categories are kind of in a similar position league-wide right now. Yeah, well, I look at it, I think, you know, you look at the defensemen that we've brought into the organization here, I think all of them can skate extremely well, very mobile back there. And in our mindset, it's all obviously an element to the, for them to get up in the offense, to help out the offense and join the play. But it's also to take away time and space in the defensive zone. And uh, I know our strong belief is, hey, we have puck possession a little bit more. Uh, it's going to be that much better from a defensive standpoint. And with players such as Marcus Johansson, Jack Eichel, I think we've done a very good job in sort of having the puck, improving our, our puck possession. Now the next step from an offensive standpoint is getting more net front presence, um, creating more chances from that that belief. But I think especially if you look at our defense from an even strength standpoint, uh, I think we made some good strides there. I think Linus Almart was, was a big help back there for us, especially in uh, the month of uh, January for us. But you know our, our belief is, hey, you know, we improve our offense, we improve – uh, the opportunity of having the puck, having the opportunity to create things offensively, it's just going to eventually help out our defensive standpoint too. Obviously, when you're bringing in pieces every year, it, it, it's somewhat trial and error. Obviously, you hope that it, uh, that it always fits. But again, when you focus on a need for more scoring, you look at guys like Simmons and Froelich that you brought in, they weren't having big offensive years. So how do you balance that again when, when you go to adjust the roster moving forward as far as what types and what age and, and what you see as potential good fits with the core that you want to keep. Yep. Because you look at a situation with, especially with the, uh, the acquisition of Roleek, leak, it was a time where our penalty killing wasn't doing very well at all. We wanted to have the opportunity to bring in someone with that experience. And it's, it's both those players, Simmons and Froelich helped us in a different category. You know, you look at our players such as uh, Reinhardt, Eichel, Ristolainen, they haven't been a part of the, those playoff environments yet. You know, Froelich and Simmons both had you know, playoff experience opportunities to uh, go deep in playoffs. And I think that knowledge that they brought to our, our, our group and to our locker room was very beneficial. So it's always trying to find that fit, that fit, some sort of balance with the players that you want to bring in. We certainly want to bring in players that can contribute offensively. Um, but when they can have some of those intangibles of helping on our PK, having prior uh, experience, um, those are things that we certainly try to, to bring into the mix too. When you talked about special teams to the media just a short time ago, um, and obviously both need to get higher up in the standings significantly, um, where do you see the breakdown? Um, you know, is it, is it philosophically from a coaching and approach standpoint? Is it players in their role needing to be in different roles? How do you look at it? Well, I think you look at our power play. Uh, I think when we were at, at our best, it was – you know, uh, when we're moving the puck of ex extremely well up, up at the top. Um, you know, I think the acquisition or, or the development of Victor Olofsson uh, and being a threat uh, with his one-timer there and his quick release was very helpful for us at the start of the year, but teams read off of that. You know, having both the threat of uh, Victor on one side, Jack on the other side, you know, I think our power play works extremely well when we're moving around and stuff very quickly. Or then you have the situation where Sam Reinhardt, you know, getting after loose pucks. Um, those are the things that I think really allow our, our power play to have success. From a PK standpoint, you know, I think we have to certainly improve our face-off percentage there. Um, you know, just you know, out, getting that puck down the ice to start off with is such, is such a benefit to the, the PK situation there. And then I think we do need to be a little bit more aggressive, denying teams in, in getting into our zone. And then once we get into the zone, we have now defenders that can skate extremely well being a little bit more aggressive from that standpoint. So, you know, the good thing is, is look, we've shown over the last couple of years in both categories that we can be effective. 
um, now we have to be a lot more consistent with it. And if we're going to talk about special teams, one has to look at Rasmus Dahlin as someone maybe right away the next time you guys take to the ice, but certainly moving forward as a guy who ultimately is going to see himself in both of those situations. Um, so how do you view where he's at and um, what he was asked to do this year from a, a newer coaching staff and where you think he can quickly get to uh, a level where he becomes even more of a game changer. Well, I think Rasmus, you know, he continues it. it we, we forget about his age being 19 years old and just what he's accomplished already. You look at the, some of the passes that he makes coming out of our own zone or the, the poise that shows at the top of the power play, you know, amazing attributes for such a, a young player uh, stepping into the league here. But look, it's a, it is an environment where we want to continue to put him in different roles, whether it's penalty killing, whether it's more minutes at even strength. Uh, we all know that Rasmus wants it as a very competitive player. Um, so just being able to physically handle those minutes against top, you know, top opponents, you know, over 82 games, handling the, the 20 plus minutes, you know, that's why, you know, we worked, uh, you know, very closely with his, uh, you know, staff back in, in Sweden that he works out with, with his, uh, you know, strength staff. And our performance staff has worked very closely with the women both here in Buffalo and back in Sweden. You know, I think this opportunity over the next few months here is a great chance for him to, to really put on the strength uh, to handle big minutes. And, uh, you know, that's, that's the beauty of interacting with Rasmus is, you know, he's not making the same mistake twice. He's always looking for ways to improve his game. And, you know, we're looking forward to him taking another big step again next year. The best always are great self-motivators. Uh, however, you've mentioned a few times the length of time now between when your season ended and when you're likely to start up again. And you talked about the performance staff having to keep the players sharp. Um, do you want to see something internally driven by your top players and almost make it into a competition, if you will, in the sense of pushing one another somehow, some way, beyond just your performance staff, having guys keeping others accountable here through this whole time. No, and I think that's it. I think the communication with our players has been great. I think, uh, you know, they've become sort of hockey nuts. You know, they all have player or uh, people that they rely on, experts that they rely on in their own field. And once they feel something that's working, they talk and communicate with each other about, you know, whether it's a new exercise, whether it's a new supplement, um, you know, and I think that's or something that they're working on a specific drill on the ice. And that sort of communication, I think, is how we get stronger as an organization. And uh, you know, it'll be interesting to see how things progress here in the fall. You know, I think the summer, people can get back into their routines a little bit here, some norm normality to their own environments there. But in the fall, they're used to coming back to Buffalo and being a part of uh, a training camp and going from there. Um, how you know, hopefully we'll have the ability to interact with them a little bit on the ice. Um, but if not, it's going to be something that uh, we continue to look to, to foster an environment where, you know, they're keeping their skills sharp and continuing to, to build the strength off the ice uh, for their bodies to handle the season. And something that I did bring up again, too, is whenever the next season does begin, you know, whether it's in November, December, January, whatever it is, it's, it's going to be a, a long 18 months between the both seasons going back to back. So, and this is a great opportunity that we have to capitalize on it because when we don't know when we're going to have a break like this ever again. When you look at the Amherst, uh, positionally in the standings, they were in a decent spot, but they also went through some alarming inconsistencies as well as far as uh, win streaks and then some drop-offs. How do you view what was happening there, given that they weren't an incredibly high-scoring team and that you do obviously want to cultivate guys from there to bring up and help in the offense? Yep, and look, it's a situation that always happens. It was... You know, I, I give the staff in Rochester a ton of credit this year. Obviously, with Chris Taylor coming up at the start of the year with the situation with Don and Granado, um, everyone handled it extremely well, and our leadership down there, I thought, really held things together. But we were very excited about, um, you know, the, the development of some of our younger players down there. When we had the four injuries at Ford up at Buffalo, obviously we're taken away from Rochester there. When we're having the injuries at goaltending in, in Buffalo, we're obviously bringing up uh, – Jonas Johansson so you're taking away one of their top goalies from that standpoint and I thought they continued to handle it extremely well especially in the second half really liked the development of uh, you know some of our younger defensemen including you know Will Borgen played against other teams top lines throughout the entire year Jacob Prison, I thought really took on sort of felt his way out a little bit in the first half in the second half really took on 
a lot more from an offensive standpoint, enjoying the rush and, you know, contributing to the power play. So I think for a first season for him, it was extremely well, great to see and, and showed huge strides there. And then just the development of Casey Middlestat playing in all different environments down there, power play, penalty killing, face-offs, you know, going against other teams' top lines. You know, you wanted them to continue to go on through, you know, get into the playoffs and seeing where that goes just for them to get that experience. Obviously, it didn't happen. Um, but that's why we're working so hard with them right now to make sure that whenever we do start up again here, they're ready to go. So would you anticipate uh, a number of players? Do you have an idea of a number of players that could be making the jump next year? Or is it too early to say based on roster openings? Well, I think it's a little bit too early to say right now here and stuff. But we look at a situation where we feel young guys coming into the next year. Uh, we we want to have a very competitive training camp. We think players like Will Borgen and, and, and Bryson can challenge for a spot, if not right out of camp or very soon after that. Uh, up front, you have a player like, who wasn't down in Rochester, but Rucho Lanen, who was over at training camp and then went back to Finland. Him coming back into the mix, I think, will be very good. You know, you have, we have players such as C.J. Smith and Asmus Asplund who played NHL games. And especially with a player like Asplund, who's you know done a very good job on the PK down there in Rochester, that could be a, a, a role that he contributes with us up here in Buffalo and stuff too. So we feel good about some of the players that we have coming through our system here. And it's more important to, hey, I think there's going to be a big swing with a lot of these players too because they're going to have an opportunity to physically grow so much that, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that they surprise us uh, at the start of training camp. Do you feel like um, and or want to make a significant deal, like a, you know, a, for lack of a better term, a blockbuster? I mean, do you feel like this, this group needs it just to change the dynamic a bit? Look, I think you're always looking to wanting to improve the team. And whether that's through free agency, whether that's through a trade, we're, we'll certainly be open to it. I think we've been, you know, you look at our track record here, we've certainly been willing to try different things if it comes around. Um, you know, to, to figure out what the landscape's going to be um, once the season's over and sort of where the salary cap's at. Wow, that's, it's sort of difficult to be um, sort of to predict right now. But what we like about it is that we feel we have flexibility, whether it's with, young players um, with their salary cap position um, that we're going to be able to handle it and whatever ends up materializing here. So um, from our standpoint, we're certainly being open to it. We're open to, to anything from that standpoint. And we look to further the, the conversations with other GMs and other teams uh, once the playoffs are over. What's the one thing you want for Jeff Skinner moving forward? The one thing. <laughs> no, like to me, hey, it's, 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 it's simple. Uh, Jeff signed here um, to help this team and this organization take a step forward and get into the playoffs. And, you know, uh, that's what, you know, with so many of our players, whether it's Jeff, Sam, Jack, uh, Ristolainen, okay, you, we're, we're, our whole mindset, our whole goal is to uh, build a team around them that gets them to the playoffs there. So to me, for Jeff, it's finding a way to get them into the playoffs and experiencing the, the challenge and the excitement of being on the playoff run. Do you think he needs a specific guy, though, so to speak, at center? And is there a type of guy that, that you'd be looking at to try to, to, try to make that, uh, you know, a perfect fit? No, I think that the beauty of Jeff as a player is that he's shown an ability to um, drive a line by himself. He's also shown an ability, obviously, to finish off chances if he's playing with a guy like Jack Eichel and stuff, too. And that's, that sort of flexibility is one of the reasons why we certainly wanted to sign him. And, you know, you look at the production this year, it certainly went down but you look at the chances that they continue to have. Uh, that's why we're excited that we think there certainly will be a rebound from this production for next year. So what about uh, the business ahead? Um, <laughs> there's a lot of questions out there as far as uh, what comes next and when, but uh, what would your calendar look like right now, organizationally speaking, as far as meetings with certain departments and trying to build and occupy all these months ahead? Well, the biggest thing right now is obviously working with our coaching staff and our performance staff to make sure the, the plans that they have in place are, are, are clearly articulated to all of our players for right now. And then, you know, we've been working very hard from an amateur scouting standpoint. Our list is certainly ready to go in case there was going to be a draft in June. We wanted to make sure we had that all, all lined up. Now we have more of an opportunity uh, to possibly even see players in, maybe over in Europe in August and, and September um, that could be draft eligible again. So We'll certainly work, work with the staff on how we're going to handle that. Uh, it's a situation where we've begun our pro scouting meetings here too. 
um, to go over diff where different teams are looking at. And, you know, the, we'll ha now have the opportunity to watch them a little bit more closely in the playoffs and go from there. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a unique environment, sort of having face-to-face -face meetings and interaction with them. Everything's on a Zoom call and, and doing it from miles away. But, you know, we feel very prepared from whenever the, you know, wh whatever the, the calendar sort of presents itself. Um, you know, and that's sort of been our mindset, what we've told our staff, is that we have to be ready for anything that materialized. We were ready for a draft that was going to come in June. Now, if it's going to be in the fall, we'll be ready for that stuff too. And you know, that's the same thing that we've done across all, all the departments. Uh, Ralph often mentioned that uh, his way might not always sit well with the uh, players. I mean, he wasn't there to be a good guy. Uh, that being said, how often did you find you and Ralph having some disagreements, uh, differences in philosophy, and how would you say you worked through those in the first year? Well, I think there's always going to be, when you go over a, an entire season and you're talking about hockey players and different options for lines and like that, you're, you're always going to run into disagreements. And that's the best thing with you know, interacting with Ralph is it's, it's a smooth conversation. You know, both of us feel are very open with, with what we are, how we're feeling, you know, what we're presenting. Um, you know, that's one of the reasons why I was attracted to bringing Ralph into our organization right away. And I think that's what our players have, have enjoyed to interact with him is that it may not always be positive news that he's pa passing along to you, um, but you respect what he's trying to do and what he's trying to accomplish. And that's always been the main focus is improving the, our individual players to help our organization. And, um, you know, we've talked through a lot of things, but whether it's, you know, a recall from Rochester or, you know, how we're, what we're doing something on a power play, there's always been that dialogue to go through. And, and eventually, you know, I think we've always came to a good result here. And I think that's just carried over here now with this pause, you know, even with him being over in Europe, our dialogue is continuing to work. Uh, you know, you have to work at making sure that you communicate with each other throughout the entire process here. We've tried to do that. And, you know, we have to now view this opportunity over the next few months to come out stronger and be ready to go for the start of the next season. Uh, last one, when it pertains to the draft, and obviously it's usually just guys at the top that can come in and make an, potentially make a, an immediate impact, um, and, and those are few. But do you feel like this draft, you, you might um, have to be a little bit more mm, uh, aggressive or like offensive-minded just to, to try to bolster the stable with potentially higher scoring type of players, maybe more wild card picks, if you will? No, you know, like it's my belief that you, you take the best player available in, in either situation there. And, you know, especially when you're we're drafting 18 year old kids here, the landscape of our organization can change drastically in, you know, a month or two months, let alone, you know, three or four years where most of these players are going to be coming through. You know, I've been happy with the model that we've implemented from a, a drafting standpoint. It's great to see some of these players now coming through our system, uh, whether it's a Jacob Bryson or next year we'll have Matias Samuelson there. Um, you know, we're, we're hoping, uh, you know, a player like Picard will be joining in Rochester next year. It's good to see some of our own draft picks now eventually coming through the system from that standpoint. And we, we, I think our staff has done a good job from that standpoint of, of communicating with each other and understanding what we're looking for. And we'll continue to go from that standpoint and look forward to uh, you know, adding some good players to, to our mix here in the fall again. Jason, thanks so much for the time. And uh, we'll keep in touch moving forward. Appreciate it. I appreciate it. Stay well.